Let's say I want to set up a network, a wireless network that has only one client, one user. I would probably just connect a wireless router to the internet, uh, create a wireless network, and I should be good to go, right? But what if this network has multiple clients? I mean, multiple users that use different internet and network services and applications. Can I still just connect a wireless router to the internet, create a wireless network, and hope it will work just fine? I mean, it could still work, but not necessarily without any problems. So to better understand what I'm trying to say, let's imagine a town where there is only one person living there with only one car. This town should pretty much be okay without any sort of traffic rules at all. I mean, what's going to happen? There's only one person with one car. But what if now there are multiple people with multiple cars or vehicles? Maybe some personal cars, some public vehicles, and an ambulance. All of them are actually sharing the same road. So now we better define some rules in order to prevent any chaos. For example, one good rule could be that uh, because the ambulance's job is more sensitive than others, it should get the higher priority when it comes to using the road. For example, when they see an ambulance on the road, they should stop and give way to the ambulance to make sure it has its own dedicated lane. Now let's go back to our network, which has more or less the same situation. I mean, depending on the network, I might want to give higher priority to some services, applications, or even users when it comes to using the network. For example, let's say in my network, I use voice over IP a lot. I want to make sure the VoIP traffic is given the highest priority by my wireless router because VoIP is actually very sensitive to any network delays. Or maybe in another network, uh, streaming online videos must have the highest priority. And they actually want to make sure even if somebody is downloading a huge file, that is not going to interrupt watching online videos. All of that can be done by using the quality of service or QoS. And today I'm actually going to show you how I can configure that on my ASUS wireless router. Okay, so I've logged into my ASUS AC68U wireless router. I'm using the ASUS WRT Merlin firmware. But the original factory firmware also has the QoS feature. There is some minor differences between the two firmware and I'll let you know as we get there. So in order to configure the QoS, I will go to the adaptive QoS section which is under the general menu here. As you can see there are four tabs here. I will go over them one by one. The first one is the bandwidth monitor and the name is kind of the recipe. Basically it is showing me the current upload and download bandwidth usage for the whole network as well as for each individual device connected to the network. For example right now I can see that this much is being downloaded and it looks like the majority of it is being downloaded by this device. Now if I also turn the app analysis on and click on the device, I will also be able to see the application or service that is using the bandwidth, which in this case it seems to be the YouTube. I can also change the bandwidth priority for each device by just drag and dropping these labels to them. For example, let's say this is my main computer and I want to make sure it has the highest bandwidth priority. This one though is my old iPad which I rarely use it for very light web browsing and I actually don't mind giving it very low bandwidth priority. Now let's go to the QoS tab which is actually the main page to configure the quality of service. Here there are three QoS types and the first one would be the adaptive QoS. First of all I need to specify my internet speed or bandwidth. I can either let the system find that out automatically or if I know it I can manually type it in here. This Q discipline option is actually only available in the Merlin firmware. I'm not gonna change it for now but apparently the CODL or FQ CODL can handle the delay in packet transmission better than the SFQ. Now in the adaptive QoS I can either select a mode that best describes the main purpose of my network. For example if it is mostly used for online games, media streaming or web surfing. And whichever I choose it is going to prioritize that kind of traffic for me. Or I can customize the priorities myself here by drag and dropping and arranging the categories from the highest to the lowest priority.
the second QoS type would be the traditional QoS. If I actually want to be more specific than the adaptive QoS, I can use this. Here I should also type in the WAN packet overhead. The good news is that if I know my internet connection type, then I can select it here and it will automatically calculate the WAN packet overhead for me. Now I'm gonna go to the user defined rules page and basically this is where I can add my rules. By default there are four rules here. The first two as you can see give the highest priority to HTTP and HTTPS traffic which is mostly used for web browsing. But because some people know these default rules they might want to try to use the HTTP or HTTPS for other purposes such as file transfer in order to bypass any restrictions and get the highest priority. And that's why we have two more rules to make sure if these ports are used to transfer files, they get the lowest priority. The only difference between the first and last two rules is actually in the transferred value. If the accumulated session size is less than 512 kilobytes, it is most likely just web browsing data. But if it is more than 512 kilobytes, it is most likely file transfer. It is up to you to keep these default rules, modify them or delete them. It all depends on your preference. For the sake of this video though, I'm gonna delete all of them and then add three new rules so we can have an idea how new rules are added. So for the first rule, I actually wanna make sure whoever is using FaceTime should get the highest priority. Luckily, FaceTime is already available in the popular services here. There are two of them though, one TCP, one UDP. I'm gonna make sure I add them both. If the service that I want to add is not listed here, I can manually type in its port numbers and of course the protocol. The FaceTime rule should be effective all across my network, so I'm gonna type in my whole network address here. For the second rule, I want to make sure my main computer always has the highest priority. I can either type in its IP address here or its MAC address. The IP address, if it is not static, it might change from time to time. So maybe the MAC address is a better idea. And for the final rule, I want to give low priority to everything else. These rules are going to actually be evaluated from top to bottom. The first rule that matches is applied and subsequent rules are not evaluated. For example, if my main computer wants to send HTTP traffic, the first rule is going to be checked, there is no match, then the second rule is going to be checked, there is no match, the third rule is going to be checked, there is a match, and the highest priority is going to be applied and the last rule is going to be ignored. Now you might be wondering how each of these priorities is going to work. I mean how much of bandwidth is actually reserved for each of them. That would be something that we can look at if we go to the user defined priorities page. By default as you can see the highest priority is gonna have the minimum reserved upload bandwidth of 80% which based on my internet speed is gonna be 24 megabits per second. And that number is obviously different for high, medium, low, and lowest. I'm actually happy with the default values, but if I want to change them, I know I can do that here. Now the question is how come we can only change the minimum reserve bandwidth for the upload and not for the download? This is basically how the traditional QoS works here. The idea is that it would be unnecessary to also change that for the download because it's a two-way communication and the download priority would automatically depend on the upload priority. We can also change the packet type priority. By default, the ACK, SYN, and ICMP packets are selected to have a higher priority. I'm actually happy with that settings, but that would be something that I can change here if I want to. The last QoS type is the bandwidth limiter. Here I can manually assign maximum upload and download speeds to each device or even a range of IP addresses to limit their bandwidth. For example, this iPad won't be able to download or upload more than 1 megabits per second. Now if I go to the classification tab, uh, which by the way is only available in the Merlin firmware, 
depending on what kind of QoS I have selected earlier, I will see some sort of traffic classification. For example, if I'm using the adaptive QoS, I can see how much data is being downloaded or uploaded by any of those categories. Or down below I can see more details, for example which device is using what kind of service or application. And basically the majority of information on this page somehow depends on what kind of QoS is being used. However, if I go to the web history tab, it's gonna show me the client device's web surfing history since the last time the router was rebooted. And it doesn't matter if the QoS is turned on or not, or what kind of QoS type is being used. Alright, that was pretty much it and I hope you liked it. And if you did, definitely hit that like button and make sure you have subscribed to the channel. It definitely helps me a lot and motivates me to make more and better videos for this channel. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.